The next motion we are going to investigate is uniform circular motion. Here we have uh, the motion uh, on a circle of radius r. We place the center of the circle on the origin and we denote the angle between where the particle is and the x-axis as theta. The motion is uniform if this theta is increasing uniformly at a constant rate, just like the motion of the tip of the minute's arm or the second's arm of a clock. So we th can think of this like an analog clock, except that here I have set the motion in the other direction. So what's the position vector at a given time? The position vector is given as r times cosine theta i, giving the x component, and sine theta j. And noting that theta is omega t, r cosine omega t i sine omega t j. If we look at the figure, we can see that the x component of this point is r cosine theta, and the y component is r sine theta. From this, we obtain the velocity by taking the derivative. The derivative of uh, position with respect to time as derivative with respect to theta and derivative of theta with respect to time. Derivative of cosine is minus sine, derivative of sine is cosine, and derivative of theta with respect to time gives me omega, and my result is r omega minus sine omega t i plus cosine omega t j. Now, this is my velocity, and to find the acceleration, I take the derivative of this with respect to time. The acceleration is found by taking derivative of velocity with respect to time. And again, we first take the derivative with respect to theta and multiply by derivative of theta. And this is a constant. Derivative of sine gives me a cosine. Derivative of cosine gives me a minus sine, and derivative of theta gives me an omega. So my result is minus r omega square cosine omega t i plus sine omega t j. Please note that here, this part is just the position r. So the acceleration vector as minus omega square r. Note the minus. It is always against r, which means it is always towards the center. The acceleration is centripetal, always towards the center. In uniform circular motion, the acceleration is centripetal. If you have non-uniform circular motion, you might have a tangential component of acceleration, but it is still inverse. So in circular motion, acceleration is inward, and in uniform circular motion, directly towards the center. Now, let's look at the direction of the velocity. To find the direction of the velocity, we will take a scalar product of the velocity with po the position vector. F the scalar product is zero, it will mean that the uh, velocity is tangential or perpendicular to the radius. If the scalar product gives the uh, product of the magnitudes, then 
it will show that these two vectors are parallel. So let's do that. The scalar product is component wise cosine theta sine theta i dot i cosine theta cos theta i dot j sine theta sine theta i dot j dot i and sine theta cos theta j dot j. Please note that when two vectors are perpendicular, their scalar product is zero as it is the cosine of the angle between the two. So this is zero, this is zero. And when the two vectors are parallel, then the scalar product is the product of the magnitudes. In this case, these are unit vectors, so the scalar product is one. In this case, our result is r square omega times minus sine theta cos theta plus sine theta cos theta. And with these two canceling each other, I have a nice big round zero. This indicates that the velocity vector is perpendicular to the position. Of course, expect it to be in the tangential direction that is perpendicular to the radius. Otherwise, the moving particle would not stay on the circle. So we have seen that uh, our expectation is fulfilled. Okay, our next job is to look at the relation between period of this motion, the acceleration, and velocity. So first, let's look at the period. Period t is the time needed for this theta to be one complete circle or two pi radians. So t times omega is equal to two pi. T equals two pi over omega. We will then look at uh, velocity in terms of this period t, well, the speed or the magnitude of velocity was omega r, and that is 2 pi r radius divided by period. And acceleration is the magnitude omega square r, which is, and finally, we will obtain a relation between acceleration, velocity, and radius without period. The magnitude of the acceleration is v square over r. Again, please note that this is the centripetal acceleration, and it is v square over r. There is no such thing as centrifugal acceleration, nor is there anything called centrifugal force. So my formulae are speed is 2 pi r over period. Acceleration magnitude is 4 pi square r square over period square. And acceleration is related to velocity speed and radius as acceleration equals v squared over r. Final kind of motion we are going to look at today is relative motion. That is the motion of one particle with respect to another one, which is itself moving. In which case, the velocity of this with respect to the other particle or other observer as its velocity with respect to the stationary observer minus the velocity of the first one. This kind of thing is important when we are talking about navigating in of a boat or an airplane. The uh, airspeed with respect to the uh, air around the plane is the speed with respect to ground minus the speed of the 
air flowing, the wind, speed of the wind. Similarly, in case of a boat, the speed of the boat with respect to the water as the speed with respect to shore minus the speed of the current at that point. The importance is that if the speed with respect to air, in case of an airplane, uh, is too small, then the airplane uh, cannot find any lift and it crashes. This happens in wind shear cases, or in Turkish, as they say, hava boşlu. Or uh, in case of boats or ships in Bosphorus, if the relative speed of the ship with respect to the water is small, because ship is traveling slowly, not to hit the shores, and the current is fast, if the relative speed is small, then the uh, rudder, that is the dumen, does not command the ship, and the ship then hits one of the beaches, as recently happened. And in this case, in Turkish, we say dümeni kilitlendi. Of course, there is nothing that got locked in that case, but just that it did not command the uh, ship anymore because there is no relative speed between the ship and the water. Now, acceleration is similar. And the acceleration of the uh, second particle or observer with respect to the first is its aspect acceleration with respect to the stationary one minus the acceleration of the first one with respect to the stationary one. Again, this is important when we are going to investigate forces on a moving object, and there are several moving objects, the forces seen by this or that observer. Okay, uh, this brings a, a, our lecture to an end. Next lecture will be on what causes this motion, that is, the forces and how they cause the motion. We will investigate that in the form of Newton's laws of motion. Thank you for listening.